Yeah. Analytics off the chain, all the channels not the same. Jake and Kyle, you know the name. Headline the nation, we running the game. Yo, what is going on, Headliner Nation? Kyle back with the Fantasy Headliners, and I might look like a hot mess because I feel like a hot mess. I'm ready for this season to be over with. These last couple of weeks have been absolutely crazy, and I anticipate even more craziness before the season is over with. I mean, felt like I had to redo the wide receiver video 50 times because every single time I would redo it, we would get word that someone else was going on the COVID list. So I had to wait till the last minute to do tight ends. I know Jake is working on his start and sit. We're gonna have to mix up the rankings a little bit this week and do them differently. It's just a crazy week. I mean, look at my hair. It is not the best hair day at all. That's how we're feeling right now, okay? But we're gonna make it through. Everyone, everyone take a deep breath because we've got this baby. Let's talk about week 15 and what our accuracy was. Pop it up on the screen there. 77% for the tight end position in a week that you absolutely all needed us. We ended up hitting 71% for wide receiver, 77% for tight ends. So really, really good week for us there. Oh, but that was last week, right? We've got a lot to talk about this week. So we need to get ourselves over there, ladies and gentlemen, and talk about some tight ends. San Francisco at Tennessee, and George Kittle has set a record for the most receiving yards by a tight end over a three-game span, and I expect him to continue that against Tennessee on Thursday Night Football. I mean, the dude is on absolute fire. Two 100-yard games and another 90-plus yard game over the last three games. I mean, obviously, this dude is 100% a start. As far as Anthony Fersker and Jess Williams, I mean, these guys have not been fantasy viable all season long. Even with the injuries that they have now and the injuries that they've had all year, these guys haven't done anything. Cleveland at Green Bay is kind of a wait-and-see approach for me right now for Cleveland. I would like to list David Njoku as a start this week, but I don't know about... I don't know about Austin Hooper, and I don't know about Jarvis Landry at this point and where their statuses are and how they're going to be back this week for Saturday night football, a short week because they didn't even play until late this week as well. So it's going to be a really, really short week for them. So we're going to have to keep an eye out for that. As of right now, I'm going to go ahead and list all these guys as sits. Now, for some reason, Hooper and Landry end up being out again. Then David Njoku is going to end up being a start for me. So make sure you watch that rankings video on Thursday for Green Bay, Mar Mercedes Lewis. I mean, there's just nothing to talk about here. I had to do it for, for an old guy. For an old guy, when he does get the ball, he's looking nimble out there, but not fantasy viable. They're two different things. Indianapolis at Arizona. And for Indianapolis, I mean, listen, Jack Doyle, Mo Alley Cox, Jack Mother and Doyle. Uh, <sighs> Can we get these guys some targets? I would love for these guys to get some targets, but they're not getting them on a consistent basis. Every once in a while, Jack Doyle comes through with a touchdown and we're like, woo, yeah, great, awesome. You ruined our week because we don't ever start you. So last week, even after Michael Pittman left, left last week, they only had two targets. Now, granted, they were up, it was fine, whatever. But for me, like... <sighs> I wish they would just get these guys more involved, right? A little play action off the run with Jonathan Taylor hitting one of these guys up the seam. Big plays could happen from it, and they're just not utilizing them, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. For Arizona, though, Zach Ertz. Indianapolis allows the third most fantasy points per game to opposing tight ends. With no DeAndre Hopkins, Zach Ertz is definitely getting a little bit more uh, of, the, of the play now and getting some more targets. And even with Chase Edmonds not really getting a whole lot of targets and not being utilized in the passing game last week, may continue to see that until Chase Edmonds is fully healed. This week, though, uh, Arizona's going to want to bounce back, so I expect the offense to be clicking on all cylinders. Detroit at Atlanta, I wanted it to be my Manscaped must-watch matchup of the week, but it can't be. Why? Because there's no TJ Hawkinson. It's Brock Wright. Who? Will the real Brock Wright please stand up? I don't even know. I mean, I don't even know what to tell you. You're not starting him. I know that. For the Atlanta Falcons, Kyle Pitts. Can somebody, like, find Matt Ryan for me and just give him a little, you know, not... You know, not hard enough to hurt him or leave a hammer, just a, a little across the face. Just a, slap a little sense into him. Because it feels like whenever the Atlanta Falcons get down to the goal line, he just doesn't look to Kyle Pitts. It's like, where's my fourth overall pick? 
that's a mismatch and can win jump balls and beat his defender. Where is he? I mean, that's the big thing about Kyle Pitts right now. He's not scoring any touchdowns. Volume still continues to be there, but there's no touchdown. So he's a start because of the opportunity. The weekly ceiling just isn't there every week. Baltimore at Cincinnati. And ooh, baby, Mark Andrews is just lighting it up right now. Even last week, hopefully y'all listened. Because I think in the live stream, I said it several times. Like People are like, should I even play Mark Andrews this week? And I was like, listen, listen, if it's me, I'm not sitting him. Now, you've got to make your own call and go with your gut. But if it's me, I'm not sitting Mark Andrews. And whew, my gut was feeling good that day because Andrews had a great game this past week. So hopefully that continues this week going up against Cincinnati. Like I kind of said in the wide receiver video, this can end up being a shootout. It could be a defensive matchup, but you're going to find Mark Andrews right in the middle of it no matter what. And Baltimore allows the fifth most fantasy points per game to opposing tight ends, but there's really nothing from CJ Who's Your Mama that wants to get me involved. I mean, the guy hasn't been fantasy relevant in weeks. Yeah, he got people excited in the middle of the season with a couple of good games, but he hasn't really done anything then. And I think by now, most of you have moved on. The LA Rams and the Minnesota Vikings and Tyler Higby, I thought was going to end up being able to make it back last week and he didn't. So now is he going to play this week? I have absolutely no idea. Regardless if he plays or not, obviously if he doesn't play, he's a sit. But if he does play, he's still going to be a sit for me. There's just not enough left over for him right now. There's too much volume going to Odell, Odell Beckham Jr., Van Jefferson, and Cooper Cup. Obviously with the run game this past week, they kind of split a little bit between Henderson and Michelle. Michelle seeing a little bit more of the workload than what Henderson did. So for me, Tyler Higby just isn't fantasy relevant right now. For the Minnesota Vikings, Tyler Conklin is going to be a start for me. Now, I don't think there's going to be huge upside, but the Rams at times this year have allowed some big plays to opposing tight ends. And with the Rams as well, I mean, you've got issues with Von Miller, you know, not being back yet because of COVID list, you know, the defense, you know, kind of having some issues here and there. It seems like at times, you know, they just, I don't know if it's they let their guard down or they just, you know, whatever it may be, they just give up some big plays. And that has kind of come at the tight end expense this season. So every once in a while, you see the tight ends break away for a couple of plays. If Adam Thielen is still not be able to make it back this week, Tyler Conklin will be another good start, but the Rams should put it on on Minnesota pretty early and pretty often, leaving Minnesota to throw the ball quite a bit. More opportunity for Conklin. It's going to be interesting to see what we get from Buffalo and New England again this week. A couple of weeks ago, it was a lot of running the ball for New England, which caught a lot of people off guard. But for Buffalo, Dawson Knox, he's going to be a star for me. I don't love the upside this week. New England has obviously been very, very good at kind of shutting down the tight end, limiting their upside. Uh, but again, Dawson Knox has that role that Cole Beasley used to fill where a lot of those intermediate routes, passes over the middle of the field, are starting to go to him. And there's no Cole Beasley this week to even take away a hint of that from Dawson Knox. So because New England has been so good, I probably look at it and say, uh, probably back off just the high upside this week. A couple of weeks ago, he got a decent amount of targets, but he had some drops as well to go with it. Hopefully that doesn't happen this week. We're back to a start with him. And for New England, John New Smith will be a sip. A Hunter Henry will be a start coming off a really big week. He's really the one guy that I can anticipate on this team getting a nice, a nice amount of red zone looks. And I would bet on him scoring a touchdown before I would bet on any of the wide receivers. Huh. <sighs> Whew, I almost slipped right through this segment because there's not really a whole lot to talk about, and it might be one of the boringest segments of the week, but... You know, for the New York Jets, uh, you know, listen, I'm not going to talk about Jacksonville. Screw them. For the New York Jets, so I am going to list Ryan Griffin as a start this week. I mean, there's just a whole lot, a lack of passing options right now for the New York Jets. And I'm feeling like there's a little touchdown upside for Griffin this week. If Griffin finds the end zone, that's a start. That's going to hit your eight fantasy points right there more than likely. But uh, listen, if you're in the semifinals of your uh, of your championship or whatever it may be, no, you're not going to start him. I'm just listening to him as a start because I think he's going to score a touchdown. It might be the most unexpected Manscaped must-watch matchup of the week. The New York Giants at the Philadelphia Eagles. Don't forget, if you're looking to get some gifts for the holiday for that special someone, head over to manscaped.com. Use code word headliners at checkout. You're going to get 20% off all of their great products, everything in your shopping cart, and you're going to get free shipping. Now, for the New York Giants and the... Why would I have this as my Manscaped must-watch matchup of the week? Well, first off, for Evan Ingram, let me... 
Hold on just a second here. Let me just... <clears throat> For the first time in forever... No, I'm not going to go into a rendition there for you, but it is. For the first time in forever, I'm going to be listing Evan Ingram as a start. Philadelphia allows the most fantasy points to opposing tight ends, so I'm going to take a shot with Evan Ingram this week. No Sterling Shepard, maybe no Kadarius Toney. We still don't know yet. It's not like Kenny Galladay has done anything this year. It's not like Darius Slayton has done anything this year. Give me some Evan Ingram to potentially score this week against Philadelphia. That's why I've got this as the Manscaped must-watch matchup. And then for Dallas Goddard, I mean, he's been just playing super well. I mean, he would have had an even bigger night on Tuesday night if it not been for that drop earlier in the game. But he's getting big plays. He's getting looks. Dallas Goddard is a super safe option right now for owners. Tampa Bay at Carolina, and for Tampa Bay, Rob Gronkowski's definitely going to be a start, and he's really the only guy that I trust on this team right now outside of probably Ronald Jones this week. They're beat up all over the wide receiver course, so you know Rob Gronkowski's going to see a lot of targets this week. Cameron Bray, maybe we see him a little bit too. It depends on whether or not Mike Evans is ready to go. Carolina is super tough against wide receivers. And if they're out there running out Tyler Johnson, Brashad Perryman, and maybe Antonio Brown or Scotty Miller, you know, at that point, eh, yeah, you might have to take a look at it. But we know Rob Gronkowski is going to be a constant, right? Now, as far as Ian Thomas and Tommy Tremble, I mean, these guys had five combined targets last week and they haven't had any production all season long. The L.A. Chargers, and I really actually like Jared Cook as a streaming option this week. No, hopefully not, no Darnell Parham this week, which is just going to allow more opportunities for Jared Cook to be on the field. Now, one of the reasons I've been out on Jared Cook is because they've been running kind of a cycle of their three tight ends on and off the field, really splitting up a lot of the snaps, which has been giving Jared Cook less options. But... This past week, we kind of saw that Justin Herbert likes to force the ball to Jared Cook a little bit, especially if he finds himself in some mismatches. And this week, if he's going to be on the field even more uh, even more often than what he would be with no Parham, that's just going to make a better opportunity for Cook. So I like Cook as a streaming option this week. As far as Houston goes, uh, you know, Brevin Jordan, Jordan Akins, I'm not really interested in either of them right now. Chicago at Seattle, Cole Komet, team high seven, nine targets and 71 receiving yards this past week. He's really becoming like that 1B to Darnell Mooney for Justin Fields right now. And I love the connection. You know that I've been clamoring for it all season long. Get Cole Komet involved. And they are. Now, if we could just get old man Jimmy Graham off the field and stop taking targets away from Komet, that'd be great. Now, as far as Gerald Everett goes... I am going to list him as a start right now, only because I have a feeling that Tyler Lockett could potentially miss again. His symptoms from COVID, from what I have read, were not great. He was really sick. And because of that, they are really looking to possibly kind of hold off on it. This is a lost season at this point. There's no sense in pushing him back. Seattle isn't going anywhere. I would hate for them to try and run him back out there just because. So I think maybe he ends up missing again. So Gerald Everett would be a start for me if he does. Now, if he does come back and he does play, I'm going to end up listing Gerald Everett as a sit. So it's something that you'll have to watch for in the rankings video. Pittsburgh and Kansas City is going to be very straightforward for you all. I don't know if either of these guys are going to play at this point. So Petty Fryermuth is coming off his second concussion of the season. I don't think he's going to be out there this week. And quite honestly, I hope he isn't. Give the guy the week. Don't push it. And honestly, are the Steelers really? Okay, Steelers fan. Don't say it on me. I'm not even going to say it because y'all are going to tell me that I hate the Steelers and I don't. Anyway, so... I don't know if it's worth throwing out Patty Fryermuth. And for Travis Kelsey, he landed himself on the COVID list. Now, he is vaxxed. We have heard that. And he could return this week. And I would expect, based on everything I've seen so far, that he does play. Now, if he plays, you play him, right? But if he doesn't, we're going to have to pivot to another option. And if you have Travis Kelsey and you're headed into your semifinals, oh boy, I feel for you. Denver at Las Vegas, and, you know, Noah fan, Albert, are you okay? I mean, both continue to be borderline unstartable. I mean, in half PPR formats, they're literally right there at that eight fantasy points, just barely below it or just barely over it, but they're splitting so many targets, snaps, routes, everything. It's just not worth the potential inconsistencies that you could find to put them into your lineup. Now, for the Las Vegas Raiders, you know, it, it depends on Darren Waller. I, I don't know if he's going to end up being out. Denver allowed 
now is the third fewest fantasy points per game. So for me personally, instead of trying to run Foster Moreau out there, if Waller is out again, I'd rather go with Jared Cook off waivers if he's there. Now for Darren Waller, if he plays, he will end up being a start. But at this point, we don't know if he will be or not. Washington at Dallas and Ricky Seals Jones is going to be a start last week, kind of giving us a scare towards the end of the week during practice on Saturday, or maybe it was Sunday practice on Sunday because they didn't play until Tuesday ended up leaving practice. Wasn't even out there dealing with an illness, but he ended up coming out and playing. And now this week, I'm going to go back to starting him again. Uh, as far as Dallas Cowboys go, I mean, Dalton Schultz is going to be a star. I mean, he's been kind of the guy for Dak Prescott in those tough situations when they kind of run a hurt, a little bit of that hurry up offense. He's been seeing more and more more touches now here's the thing though um are there going to be any tough situations against washington i mean if they end up getting up on washington i mean washington started well against philadelphia on tuesday night but then kind of whoop, crashed and burned after that so are they going to be able to get up this week going up against dallas if not there might not be enough volume to go around but i'm still going to have dalton schultz as a start anyway Miami at New, or New Orleans, and there's not going to be a whole lot to see here. I'm not going with Mike Gusecki. New Orleans allows the 10th fewest fantasy points to opposing tight ends, allow under 10 fantasy points per game to them, and Gusecki has just been way too inconsistent for me, even with guys missing time this season. He has good games, and then he doesn't, and spots that it seems like he smashed, he doesn't. So in a tougher matchup, I'm not going to go with him this week. And for Troutman and Vinette, neither of them have been consistent enough either for me to start them this week. There you have it, Headliner Nation, my start and sit analysis for tight ends here in week 16. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're new. And leave a comment down below. Let me know who is your tight end start of the week. Who do you think is going to go off this week? Who's your tight end that you need to help win your fantasy matchups? I'm going to get out of here for now, though. Everybody stay safe and stay healthy. And I will catch you on the next episode of the Fantasy Headliners.